Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about the kinematics of belt and gear driven systems. Uh, so belt and gear driven systems, a belt or a gear driven system will have fixed axis pulleys or gears uh, where motion is being transferred via belt or the teeth of a gear from one axis to another axis. Uh, and so this is building on our fixed axis rotation because we've got kind of multiple fixed axis rotations going on at once. Uh, so here's an example of a belt driven system. We've got an input motor. Uh, it's going to be driving a number of output uh, pulleys in this case via the belt. Uh, and something like a gear train like this, uh, we've got the uh, power being transferred and the motion being transferred uh, rather than via belt via the teeth uh, that are meshing here. All right, so we're going to start by talking about belt systems or chain driven, driven systems. The chain is going to be the same as a belt, kinematics wise at least. Uh, and when we have that uh, belt or chain that's in contact with a pulley or sprocket and there's no slipping occurring between the belt and the, uh, the, uh, the pulley or, or uh, sprocket there, uh, the speed of the belt therefore must be equal to the speed of a point on the edge of the belt. Uh, so here we've got the, uh, uh, a chain and a sprocket on a bike. Uh, and so the speed of the chain itself must be the speed of the sprocket, a point on the end of the sprocket. So the velocity of your belt would be r times omega uh, for, say if we've got the r is this distance here, uh, omega is the angular velocity, uh, that's going to be the speed of your belt, this vb here. Multiply those, those two things together. All right, so when the belt connects two pulleys or when we've got a chain connecting two sprockets here, uh, the belt must remain at a constant speed across both of those pulleys or sprockets. Uh, so it's one belt. Uh, if we had different speeds at different locations, the belt would be piling up in some locations and stretching out in the others. So assuming we've got a fairly rigid uh, belt or chain, uh, that means that the velocity of the belt must be constant and the relation holds across both of these. So the velocity of the belt would be r1 times omega1 uh, which is maybe over here, it would also be equal to r2 times omega2, which would be over here. Uh, so this means that the radius of the input and output are different. The angular velocities must go up and down, uh, and they're going to be related through the following equation. So the radius uh, of the uh, pulleys or the radius of the sprockets, so r1 times omega1 would be r2 times omega2. And so if we make one, uh, say we make r1 smaller, omega 1 would have to be larger so that this ratio holds true across the two things. Uh, so it also works with angular velocity, so same relationship, r1 alpha 1 would be r2 alpha 2 as well. All right, so that is for uh, a belt or chain driven system. Uh, for gear driven systems, um, it's more or less going to follow the same relationship uh, except uh, the directions are reversed. So when we had the belt or chain driven system, all of those pulleys or sprockets are going to move in the same, uh, the same uh, direction in terms of angular velocity. Gears, when the gears mesh, uh, the velocity is reversed actually. So we're going to have, uh, if we have a clockwise rotation on the input, we have a counterclockwise on, on the output. And so we just put a negative sign in our, our relationships to make that work. So r1 omega1 would be equal to negative r2 omega2, and r1 alpha1 would be equal to negative r2 alpha2. All right, so for larger changes in torque and speed, uh, so say we want a very large uh, difference, the input we want to be running uh, like 50 times as fast as the output. Uh, so we're going to run through a series of pulleys or a series of gears rather than relying on one very big jump. Uh, and that'd be a, an instance like this. So the, say the red gear is our input. Uh, the red gear is going to drive the blue gear. Uh, the blue gear is on the same uh, axis as the yellow gear. And then the yellow gear drives the green gear. So there's a big difference in the speed of the red gear and the speed of the green gear. Uh, we're very much stepping down the speed here. Uh, so in these systems, any motion transferred via a belt or meshing teeth is going to follow the relationships we dealt with in the previous slide. So we just dealt with uh, the red to the blue, um, and that would be you know, R1 uh, omega 1 would be equal to negative 
R2, Omega2. Uh, same thing going from yellow to green. Uh, but we also, in these systems, will often have two pulleys or two gears that are on the same shaft. Uh, and when things are on the same shaft, they're going to have the same angular velocity, the same angular acceleration. So this is where we have this happening here is the blue and the yellow gear. And you'll notice the rate of rotation of the blue gear is the same as the rate of rotation of the, of the yellow gear. So going all the way through the system, we'd go the red gear to the blue gear with R1 omega 1 is equal to negative R2 omega 2. And then the uh, blue gear and the yellow gear, omega for the blue gear is equal to omega for the yellow gear. And then another similar step for meshing gears. Uh, so like R3 omega 3 is equal to negative R4 omega 4 going from yellow to green there. So all of that gets pulled together in our complex system. Uh, same kind of thing can be applied uh, to pulley-driven systems, uh, except we wouldn't have the minus sign because pulleys maintain all the same direction. All right, all of this comes together with gear ratio. So a gear ratio is a single number. It's a simplification of math from the previous slides. So for a single set of gears, uh, where we've got two gears that are meshing, the gear ratio is defined as the radius of the output gear over the radius of the input gear. Uh, which will be equal to the number of teeth on the output gear over the number of teeth on the input gear. Uh, that second one's useful because if you don't have a ruler on hand, you can just count the number of teeth. Uh, so that's the definition of our gear ratio. Uh, and if we look back at the equations, we'd see that this is the uh, inverse of our uh, angular velocities or our angular accelerations, um, or also angular displacements if we want to interest in that as well. So. Uh, the gear ratio would also be equal to uh, the input angular velocity over the output angular velocity, or the same thing with angular, uh, angular accelerations, or angular displacements, uh, this delta theta over here at the end. All right, so uh, beyond a simple one input, one output system, uh, the gear ratio also can be used across a, a larger set of gears. So uh, like the gears in your transmission on a car, uh, it's actually not just two gears, it's going to be kind of multiple gears lined up. Uh, so in this case, the radius or the tooth relationship is the product of all the individual interactions uh, created via a belt or meshing teeth. Uh, so we've got a pulley driven system down here and pulley systems can also, we can talk about the gear ratio for that. Uh, and the gear ratio for this would be uh, RB over RA uh, times RD over RC. And so the reason we don't have a C to B step is because these things are on the same axis. So it was uh, the output over input and output over input. We just multiply those two kind of simple gear ratios together to get the complex gear ratio. And then once we have the gear ratio for any sort of complex system, uh, we can immediately go back to what we had on our previous slides. We can use these relationships down here at the bottom uh, with the gear ratio rather than dealing with all of those steps every single time. All right, so uh, it's also important to note gear ratios generally do not include the direction of rotation, so you do need to figure that on your, on your own. Uh, for a pulley-driven system, not a big deal. Everything rotates in the same direction. Uh, but we have a string of gears that are all connected together. Uh, every time you mesh gears, you change direction from one way to the other. So it is important to kind of intuitively think about uh, it's going to be clockwise or counterclockwise in the end. All right, so that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.